we have somebody calling himself Shake. Let us see what this Shake is about. He's not answering. Hello? 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 Hi? You are a Muslim and you say to me hi? Are you a Muslim? Yes. Are you a Muslim? Yes. Okay, are you the same person who called me yesterday and I hang up on him? I'm calling for the first time. Uh, for the first time, why are you changing your voice? Changing my voice? Do you know how my voice was? Okay, so what do you want, my friend? How I can help you? I heard it just lying to the sister. Okay, how I lied to her? Help me, go ahead. Okay, let's go back to anything you said to her. Like what? Like Islam being deceptive. Okay. Like being... What is the word? What is the word deception mean? What deception mean according to your understanding? Deception uh -huh. is asking people to do something. Uh huh. Once they do, so they what? What they, expect, what they were expecting from you, they don't get it from you. Ah, okay. But if I, if you're expecting from somebody something, you did not do it, that's not your fault because this is their expectation. What does this have to do with deception? If you say to your kid, hmm. here I give you $20 if you cut the grass. Okay. He cuts the grass. Okay. And you, and then you refuse to give him his 20 bucks. Okay. That's deception. All right. So I want to ask you then, if Allah, he promised me uh, to go to heaven and then Allah, he made me go to hell, but he promised me to go to heaven. Is that what you are talking about? Allah promised those, anybody, anybody believes in Allah, uh -huh. believes last day okay. in a righteous life, All be right. Is a is a is a is a is an is an infant. He is a born of a Muslim family. Will go to heaven. Anybody? Yeah, let, let me first answer your question. Okay. You, the first question was about um was about who's if Allah promise hmm. the heaven to you. All right. Be you, be you Jew, be you Nazarene, be you Muslim. If you believe in Allah in, in the last day, mm -hmm. in righteous life, okay. you can put the up, it's five, it's two, six, 262, uh -huh. put the up and read it and see how merciful is Allah. Okay, I have, a, I have a hadith in front of me. I, want, I need your help. Can you help me with it? Why you? I'm quoting you the word of my God. And I'm, you I'm quoting to you the word of your prophet. We will go to the word of your God. No problem. Are you saying you don't? You, are you saying the word of your prophet is a false word? It's here's people. He could have said that. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. Uh, we can say the same to the Quran. Maybe he did not say the Quran. Quran been written by who? Time of Muhammad. Okay, do you have the Quran of Muhammad? Yes, sir. Where, where is you, the Quran of Muhammad? Why are you changing the No, I'm, I'm not changing anything. You just say that we have the Quran of Muhammad, but no, not a single Muslim says we have the Quran of Muhammad. I was talking about the deceptive word. Exactly, you but you, I, I, I showed you what your prophet says about deception here. I will show you a hadith. You said you don't want yes. to read the hadith. Why you don't want to read the hadith? Are you saying that you Muslims, when you collect things, about your prophet, you lie. Anybody collects anything, gonna uh -huh. create problems. That's why 
when they corrected the Bible, Luke uh -huh. contradicted, uh -huh. Matthew contradicted, John contradicted Mark, because okay. it's here. So how, if, okay, as long as you take the Quran, how the Quran well, then confirm the, the Bible then? Hold on, please. Let me, let me prove. You see, the, no, no, the woman... Go, you see, you are going against your Quran now. Does the Quran, see, does the Quran agree that the Bible is clear and it is proven and Muhammad believe in it? You deceived her. Now you want to deceive me. I'm asking me. you, is the Quran, the book of God, confirming the Bible we have in our hand? Yes or no? No. Okay, read for, me, Bible... read for me chapter 2, verse number 41. Of course, I know what you're talking about. I can read the verse. You, you said you what see, we got You see, you stupid son of Muta. You are ultimate for changing your voice, and now you came to your voice back again. You forgot yourself. Hold on. You said what? You ultimate for the ultimate fort. Ultimate who? Ultimate fort. For, you do you want to keep this going or you want to just watch? <laughs> Aren't you ultimate fort? Be honest with me. What are you talking about? Swear by Allah that you are not the one who call himself ultimate truth. I swear by Allah what? That you are not the one who call himself ultimate truth. I swear by Allah I am, that I am not the one that call himself ultimate for, ultimate what? Did you say the F word? You Ult said, ultimate I, truth. I, ultimate truth. Ultimate truth. Truth. Who's truth. ultimate? Just saying, so I swear by Allah that you are not the one who call himself ultimate truth. Why are we going to do it with that? We, do you say what Allah Just say, say it, say it, say it. You change your oh, voice, you change your oh, voice, but we, we can, we, you know, we, we know that is you. Who, who is that guy? Why are you afraid of that guy then? I'm not afraid. He will go, I'm talking to you and you are a coward. You are the one who changed your name, you coward. See, and then you're running from the guy? You are the, the one, you, you are the one who's running away from me. He will go, we show you the Quran, we show you the Hadith. And when you call me, you call the MF to your prophet. Did you say the, the, the word MF to your prophet last time you called me? Oh, I know what you're talking about. You didn't know what to talk about, you son of Muta. Go change your voice. Shame on you. You have, you, you know, you have no dignity. You, you are just, a, you are just a very fake person. I mean, you change your voice. You know why well, you are showing me the hadith? We know ultimate fault. He don't accept the hadith. Run, CP. Run. Run, coward, son of Muta. Run. <laughs> 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 see the coward he changed his voice you deceived her you know and now we are showing the quran there is this claim there is discrimination there is a, you know there's contradiction in the bible i mean you have no dignity you, last time you called me you called self your fakira and now you are talking to like a homosexual hi i mean don't you even respect yourself you say to me hi <laughs> so there is a contradiction you deceived her you know like what the heck change your voice speaking from your nose stupid idiot nobody run from you but we don't want to have a filthy mouth here your mouth is a sewage coward here we go this is the Quran in front of you Saying, confirming, which already they possess already with their hand. Musaddiqan lima ma'akum. And you stupid idiot, when you say, you said to me that chapter 66, this is the last time what you mentioned to me. I mean, you try to change your voice. I know, and there is somebody in the chat, he says, uh, from previous, last time. He said, this is not him. Come on. What a coward you are. What a potato you are. You are the joke of everybody. You know, we asked the guy about how he's a prophet, this obey Allah. This is the same guy who accepts that the Quran is corrupted, if you remember. He accepts the Quran of Rashad Khalifa. He is a follower of Rashad Khalifa. And he don't accept the Hadith. I asked this potato, okay, what is the name of your prophet wife? He said, Aisha. What is the name of her father? He said, Abdullah. I said, where do you get this from? <laughs> he said, I don't believe in the Hadith. You don't accept the Hadith at all. The hadith is made by the MF Arab. Very filthy mouth. Then the second you ask him a question, what is your prophet was? Mecca. Who's, whose wife? Aisha. 
Who is Abu Bakr al Khalifa? Like, well, so how do you know that? From the hadith. And then he said to me, from the books of history. But the only books of history is the book of hadith about Muhammad. It is a one single book written by an English man in the time of Muhammad about Aisha or a Greek man. <laughs> what books of history? What? <laughs> Coward. So anyway, we ask him about this verse here, chapter 66. We ask him why the Prophet, he forbidden what is not forbidden by Allah. Why he is breaking the command of Allah. He said to me, uh, according to him, that uh, if, if you are a messenger, there's a difference between messenger and a prophet. You know, there's a difference between messenger and a prophet. Okay, what's the difference? One, he commits sin and the other one don't commit sin. Muhammad, he has double personality. <laughs> he don't commit sin and he commits sin in the same <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? So Muhammad, as a messenger, uh, he don't commit sin, but as a prophet, he do. But who is higher, a prophet or a messenger? And how you can be the same, both in the same time? So you, as a messenger, you don't commit sin, but as a prophet, you commit sin? I mean, have you ever heard of such a stupid answer? Just to, 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 to save himself from, from getting busted. But look what he did now. He admit that Muhammad was breaking the command of Allah. And we ask him, what is the reason for this verse? He refused to say, because the verse here is about Muhammad. He been found red-handed having sex with his servant, his slave, and her legs was up when the wife came to the bedroom. And she said to him, in my day, in my in my bed, you filthy son of Muta. And then Muhammad, he told her, if you don't tell anyone, I will make your father the caliphate after me. You ask this potato, what is the reason for this verse? He said, eh, who care? Or I care. What do you mean you don't care? This is the Quran. We should know. Shouldn't we know what he forbid? What he made unlawful? How how a prophet of God he break the command of God? Why he do that? But anyway, it's, you know, I made a promise I will not let him speak in my broadcast because he is very filthy, you know? And when he tried to fix it about saying the MF word to his prophet, he said that he meant to insult me. Supposedly he tried to fix it, but it's too late, it's recorded. Anyway, do we have any real Muslim? Beside this idiot who is not a Muslim, is Rashad Khalifa follower? Anyone? Any real Muslim? Half Muslim? You know, I like it when a Muslim, he says that you deceived her. But isn't it the Quran says Allah is the best of the deceivers? Hmm. Let us search in the Quran for the word you will. I'm not going to type anything. I just, you know. This is the Quran. Chapter 16, verse number 37. It says, even though if you, Muhammad, desire their right guidance, still Allah assuredly will not guide them whom he mislead. This is the Muslim translation. Allah will not guide who? Whom he mislead. So what shaitan do for a living? Who is shaitan in Islam? Shaitan is Muhammad, is Allah. So Muhammad, he could not explain why they don't believe. And Muhammad now is being smart. He's an idiot. He's stupid. So he want to give himself an excuse. He said, Allah told me, are you trying to guide those who Allah, he himself mislead? It's not shaitan. He mislead them. Do you understand? Who is the one who mislead those people? Allah. Read carefully. Chapter 16, verse number 37. And this is the Muslim translation. 
If we ask the Muslims, who is the one who mislead people from worshiping Allah? They will say, Shaitan. Correct? Shaitan. Okay, but the Quran says Allah. Are you going to guide those who Allah mislead? And there's tons of verses like this. Allah is the deceiver. Allah, he deceive as he wish, and he guide as he wish. Chapter 16, verse number 93, as an example. Had Allah willed, he could have made you all one nation, which means believe in one belief. But he sent whom he will astray. What the word astray here? Yudel. What does that mean? Mislead, deceive. He is the one who sent people astray. It's not shaitan. And all those verses are endless. Chapter 35, verse number 8, saying the same. Allah, He sent astray as He wish, and He guide as He wish. So if you are a person who is lost, Allah, He sent you astray. It's in the front of you. So He said, I deceive this woman. According to the Quran, the only one who deceive is Allah. The Quran in front of you. Chapter 40, verse number 34, is the same. Chapter 74, verse number 31, is the same. And thus how Allah, He mislead. This is big title translation. Let us see Hilali Khan. Read with me. Who is the one who mislead? Who is the one who lead you astray? Allah is the devil. This is the Quran. We are not, this is not even our translation. We are reading the Muslim translation as, as it is. And the Quran is full of those verses. In chapter 4, verse number 88, things getting even more filthy. The Quran claimed that the one who Allah deceive, no one can guide, period. Do you want to guide who Allah made him go astray? The Quran says, chapter 4, verse number 88. And he whom Allah has made you made to go astray, you will never find a way for him. Do you see how silly, stupid this cult is? But according to Allah, He is the one who mislead people. That means the people of Quraysh, they were mislead by Allah. So what the point of Muhammad being sent to Quraysh, so they will be guided? If Muhammad, Allah told him, are you going to guide the one who Allah misguided? Somebody saying, it's so clear, but why they don't open their heart? My friend, you see, what we do is like a drop of water. You know the drop of water? Let's say you have a faucet. And under the faucet, there is a marble or a rock, very tough rock. The drop of water, after some time, is going to make a hole on the rock. So it might appear that they are not, but as you see, the lady who called me, she was listening for years. And, you know, the more she listened, the more she studied, she researched, she find that we are sharing the truth. So things will not happen overnight. You know, me, myself, I do not know how many people leave Islam because of what I do. I have no idea. If she did not call me, how I know? We don't know. 
there's many people they don't have the courage to, to call say I left Islam you know that this is a region of terrorism if somebody leave a Christianity he make a video about it right now you know nobody will kill him but there's millions of Muslims don't, don't you see in, in Iran they are burning the hijab by millions which means there is apostate by millions in the street not hidden like inside the houses they don't fear the police no more already thousands of them get killed do we have any muslim here there to call us he is a truly a true, a true believer not like this idiot who is a true believer in Allah and his messenger? He can call us. Any Muslim? Actually, CP, even in that English translation is this, this uh, deceptive because did not indicate yeah but you know but uh, you do not need to go by the translation there is a very easy way to find out if this is true or not very simple just go and copy the word and put it in the dictionary very simple and you will find the meaning you know what I mean They lie, we understand. But even, you know, like, okay, they, they, they took the word deceive, but he is the one who did astray. Isn't it the same? What did astray mean? The one who deceived. Astray mean what? Go wrong, right? If we take now this translation, I will take the word go astray, and I will use Google Dictionary, you know, search in Google, to see what go astray mean. Let us see what this word means. It's, it's the same. They did not save their God. Of an object become lost or misled. Do you see it? Misled. Misled. It's mean Allah is lying. Who is the one who lied to us? Allah. Who is the one who misled us? Allah. So, in one hand, the Muslims and the Quran claim that the one who misled mankind is shaitan, but then we find that the one who really, the real deceiver is Allah. And the one who Allah deceives, nobody can guide. He's more evil than the devil himself, if he's not a devil. Ishmael was a blessed to fool. What the Muslim have to do with Ishmael? You see, mistakenly, many Christians, because of what they learn in their churches, because the, our priests are ignorant like Muhammad, they keep saying to them that the Muslims are from Ishmael. But isn't it the Bible says that Ishmael, his mother, she is an Egyptian, and she took him to Egypt and she married him from Egyptian women. So how the Egyptian man, the son of Egyptian women, the son of an Aramaic man, he married an Egyptian woman and he is the father of the Arab. But you go to churches because our churches, they are copy paste like the Muslims, many of them. A bunch of ignorant priests. They keep saying that the Muslims are Ishmael, the Ishmael, Ishmaelis. They are not. They have nothing to do with Ishmael. They have. <coughs> you know, even the word Arab many because of their ignorance they think Arab it's an ethnic Arab is not an ethnic Arab is an Aramaic word mean desert people who live in the desert Arabia is a desert if you live in the desert they call you Arab Aram is for those who live in the high hills so if you are for sure there's a person his name is Aram but the reason he was called in such a name because he will live in such an area Arab is not an ethnic if you live in Las Vegas, you are an Arab, based in the Aramaic language. <laughs> the, 
This is why in the Quran, like the same idiot here, the one who called me, he once he argue that uh, the the uh, the word in the Quran, Arab, is not the Arab, not the Bedouin. He said it's not. No, it's not. What is Al-Arab? Al-Arab is the Arab who live in a tent still. There is Arab who live in a house and there is Arab who live in a tent. So those who live in the tent, we call them the Bedouin. The Bedouin, even in Arabic, by the way, we call them the Bedou. Bedou, all right? So all those words you see speaking about Arab, 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 but all of those, are, 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 the Arab are Arab. Muhammad is from a tribe. It's called Quraysh. We have a, a person, his name Adam Taj, and he is a crying. Uh, Adam, why you don't call us, my friend? Adam Taj. You know, look who is talking about love. Adam, who follow Muhammad, talking about love. Well, Adam, you know, your prophet, he have too much love to the point he went to his own son's house and he fell in love with the wife. Is that the love you are seeking, my friend, Mr. Adam? Is that the best example for you for love? I like it when a Muslim he school other people about love. Is that your prophet who put nails in the eyes of people and he chopped their hands and their feet and he crucified them? And you are coming here to school people about love? Will Muhammad he love all the Muslim women to the point you want to sleep with all of them? Isn't it the Quran says any believing woman she offer herself to the Prophet so he can if her? So maybe the love you are looking for, Mr. Adam, is somebody to sleep with your wife. And that will be the best example for you. All of us we knew that Muhammad, he took Zaid as his son, and he said, From now on, Zaid is a son of Muhammad, and Muhammad is the father of Zaid. What on me is on him, and what in him on me. That's it. And then what he do? He go to the house of his own son. He see the women wearing see-through clothes. And he said to her, Subhana mu'alliful qulub. Praise be to Allah who made my heart, obviously his balls, flip for you. This is God, and this is a prophet. Well, Adam, he have no answer for us. He keep complaining. Let us send you to Allah. Take care, Adam. You are just a you are just an angry soul, my friend. You are calling people names, but you could not answer anything. Why you don't answer us about your prophet flirting with his own son wife, and later he took her as a wife? What kind of God? He tell the prophet that this is yours. Take her. She's married. What kind of God? He send the message to his prophet, saying to him. This is a woman. Why you are you ashamed to say to people that you want her? She is yours. His son came home and the wife, she told him, do you know that your father was here and he flirted with me? The Muslim book says, for Fatina Zaid. So Zaid, he oh, got it. Man, my father is sleeping with my wife. So he went to Muhammad and he said to him, please give me permission to divorce my wife. And here you ask yourself, why is asking for permission to divorce his wife? A Muslim man do not need permission, but because he is his son. Uh, did you get the point? He's asking for permission because this man is still under the promise that he is the son of Muhammad. And then Muhammad, because of that, because of that woman, he made a law in the Quran to forbid adoption. Just because he want to sleep with his own son wife. The Arab, they used to have a lot of noble action. One of it is adoption. Muhammad, he could not have kids. It's not a secret. This is why he was adopting this man. And properly, he adopted him 
so he can marry him to this girl so he can sleep with her when the husband is not home so it's an excuse anytime I go inside the house nobody will question even my wife's why I'm going to my son house nobody will suspect Do we have any Muslim here? All right, we will exit Skype. And uh, as you see, you know, we are happy to see. And by the way, don't forget to watch the previous video before this one and please post it everywhere. I want to hear the answer of Zakir Naik, this potato, if he dare to answer. Why the Quranic surahs have names of animals? You see, even the names, they don't have the same names. They have many Quran and some other Quran, they have different names. The Quran does not have same names. After they made the Quran, they try, they try to copy the Bible. You know? Like the, the, those the Arab desert, they don't have like a chapter and verses. And Muhammad never gave chapter and verses. This doesn't exist. Muhammad, even the Muslim themselves, they say to you, Muhammad do not know how to read. So, but because there's a Christians and there's Jews, and the Christian and the Jews, they have a chapter, they have verses, they are civil nations, they have a lot of uh, uh, like uh, 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 religious books. So the Muslim, when they make the Quran, try to copy the Christian books. But in the same time, they have a problem. If we make those chapters, what we will do? Chapter 16? What chapter 16? What, what we should put there? So they look and they say, okay, from every chapter we make, we look for something we think it's important, and we name the chapter by it. But if you think about it, it's just silly. As an example, chapter of the bees. If you go to the chapter of the bees, you will find the chapter is not talking really about the bees. I mean, there is little speaking about the bees, but this is not the most important thing. Look, he spoke about the bees once, and then the rest have nothing to do with the bees. What does this have to do with the bees? They call it the chapter of the bees. Why? Because there's one verse, Allah, he said, bees, Allah, he inspired the bees to eat from the fruit and to do poopoo with the poopoo is honey. Chapter of the genie, actually, the chapter of the genie is very funny because according to the chapter of the genie, the one who made that chapter is the genie. And yet the Quran says, who can make Quran like Allah? And the Quran says, even if the human being and the genie, they meet together, they cannot make Quran like this, brother. They cannot even make 10 verses like this. And then we find that the chapter of the genie, all of it is, the, is, is made by the genie. And, and not only that, what about the chapter of the, where the, we're speaking about the end, chapter 27 and chapter 18? You know, who is the one making the Quran? The end, she said, Allah is quoting the end. I thought nobody can make Quran. Suddenly the end speak Arabic and the end, she said. Who's talking? Remember, nobody can make Quran like Allah, right? And then we find that Allah is quoting who? Is quoting the ch chicken, is quoting the ants, I mean, the ants she said. So, who made this verse here? Look, till when he came to the value of the ants, this Allah is talking. One of the ants is saying, Stop, Allah, stop talking now. Oh, ants, enter your dwelling, lest Solomon and his host crush you while you perceive not. So, who is the one who made the Quran? The ant. Quotation, quotation, Allah is quoting the end. What if it was a gorilla? <laughs> okay, uh, the end, she said that in which language? 
So if you think about it, actually, the Quran is a translation. It's not an Arabic. It's not origin Arabic because there's no way the end she was speaking Arabic because neither Suleiman is an Arab, neither the end is an Arab, unless she's an Arab, is she? Is she? So now we found that the Quran itself is a translation. Allah translating what the end is saying. What if a rat was in the way of Solomon? Allah will quote the rat. What if it was a frog? And then Solomon, he checked the birds. And Allah, he quote Solomon. But I said, but I thought nobody can make Quran. So now this is, this is what Solomon said, or this is what Allah said. If this is what Solomon said, that's mean Allah is not the one making this Quran. Solomon made this Quran. And then Suleiman, he checked the birds. And then he found the hood is missing. Like, what the heck? Where do you go, man? And then he said, I will surely punish him. I mean, look how serious the story. One of the birds are missing, brother. Allah, the one who created the seven midget and the seven Lord of Ring series and the seven galaxies is now making a story and quoting us what happened to Suleiman when he went to the chicken cube. He did not find the chicken. Suleiman gets so angry. He said, if I don't, if this chicken did not give me a reason for why it is absent, I will make it barbecue. This is God. This is God. And then they say to you, who can make Quran like this? An amazing brother. And then they bring a person who have a nice voice to send for you the Quran. What about I play for the Quran for you with somebody have an ugly voice? You will die laughing. You will vomit. There is a... There is a sheikh. Let me see if I can find the video. He was in France, I think. <clears throat> so you know the Muslim uh, they, they claim that the Quran like you right away your heart will tell you so the guy he asked uh, someone is not a Muslim he's a French anyone volunteerly to come to the stage to the, to, to the, to the like stage and he said I'm going to do something now I will recite the Quran for this guy And his heart will, will will make him see which one is the correct Quran. I will make I will recite two things. One is true Quran, and one is a false Quran. I'm trying to find the video. I don't know if they delete it. It should be there. He make a chapter, it's called the chapter of the apples. <laughs> and look now the Muslim, they are saying that the Sheikh is now in the hospital, brother. Allah punish him, brother. But this is not the same guy. And if he is the same guy, I make fun of Allah every day. So anyway, he recite the chapter, which is false chapter from the Quran. He, cre he created himself, like fabricated. And he recited a chapter from the Quran, read the Quran. And they asked this French guy, which one you think is more close to your heart? He chose the false one. <laughs> but I cannot remember, I cannot remember like what the title of the video was. And supposedly, like, you know, he will embrace the people like, wow, he, he chose the correct one. Wow. How he, I mean, the guy don't even understand an Arabic word, one Arabic word. Here we go, I found it, here we go. This is the video. So this is the guy, Is a French guy. They put him in the stage and he said, today I'm going to uh, do this. I will recite two uh, uh, Quran. One is false Quran and one is true Quran. And we will ask him, which one is more close to your heart? Because Allah will make you see the truth. 
So he make fabricated Quran, and by the way, any Muslim who hear them, he will not know the difference. They sound the same. Both of them, they sound the same. Do you know, ask him, do you know the difference between Arabic or Pharisee or any language? You know, the guy, he said no. If I speak to him Arabic or Urdu or uh, Persian, he will not make a difference? The answer is, he don't, he don't understand it. C'est-à-dire que si là maintenant le chef parle avec toi en ourdou, en perse ou en arabe, tu peux pas faire la différence. Là, il fait. Anyway, I will give you the link for the video. You can watch it in your own, you know, if you wish. It's very funny, very stupid, and very embarrassing. And then the guy he chose the false Quran, and there's thousands of people watching. And now there's people they are copying this Quran, false Quran, published everywhere because he made it really so good. The guy, he sing the false verses, the one who he created them. And they sound really like a real Quran. Even better. Let us see her. The false Quran. Let us go to the false Quran. Where is the false Quran? Huh, here we go. Now this is the false Quran, guys. You see, he is, he's making the sound the same as the Quran. This is something he just created. He just made it up. He just sing it the same as the Quran. And now he will ask the guy, which one is more close to your heart? Everybody is laughing. He threw the second sentence. He liked the second verse, the first one. He said he felt comfortable more with the, with the, with the, with the last one. <laughs> So you can play this this uh, this video. You can play the part of the when he play. If you speak Arabic, you can play what he said. We said together. We went together. We ate together. Uh, but it sounds like Quran to a Muslim. He will say, "Yeah, it's beautiful." He will he will think really it's like Quran. Actually, I should do that. Just wait for some time when when time come. I will play it for a Muslim. I will ask him, "What do you think about this Quran?" I assure you, he will say it amazing. But he doesn't understand. Because sound like you know something he's singing it, and now supposedly by doing that they will make a lot of people like wow Islam is amazing. But this guy he was just simple. He did not lie. He liked the second one, which is the false Quran. If you remember Mimi Hijab when he was speaking to uh, what his name Patterson, suddenly he started reciting the Quran. Patterson did not know what happened, he just started singing, you know. Why? Because the Quran says if you recite those verses to a mountain, the mountain will collapse. And nothing happened to the guy. Like uh, Patterson was looking like, what, what, what he is doing? Like why he is, what, what he is singing, you know? This is what he caught for him, chapter fifty nine, verse number twenty one. If we had caused this Quran to descend upon a mountain, though O Muhammad verily had seen its humbled, rent asunder by fear of Allah, such is the same, you know, like a translation is really very, 
uh, what the heck with this translation? What the heck? This guy is using Google Translation. I can't even me myself. I can't read read the, the English one. How do we send down this Quran on a mountain? You should surely have seen it humbling itself. He surrendered to Allah. So Mimi Hijab, he starts suddenly, he starts singing the Quran. Patterson, he did not know what he's doing. He said, what, well, after he finished, he said, why you, why you, what, what is that? What was that for? Mimi Hijab, he says, uh, well, this is the Quran, you know, like will make your heart, blah, 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 blah. This Quran, if you throw it in a mountain, the mountain will collapse. He will humble himself. It's not working, my friend. As you see, people are laughing at your Quran. Anyway, I hope today we have a good time. Don't forget to download my videos. If you did not subscribe, feel free to subscribe. Uh, guys, you need to bring me people to debate me what I can do. You, you need to challenge shakes. When you go in any uh, forum, ask the shakes, all those. What about you guys? Listen, what about you send email to Zakir Naik? Muslims, hey Muslims, why you don't send email to Zakir Naik? Christians, send email to Zakir Naik. Everybody, ask him why you don't refute Christian Prince. If you don't want to debate him, at least refute him. He just made a video, and this is the previous video, asking which one Allah created first, the mountains or the stars. Let everybody laugh at him. Do we have any Muslim? Any brave Muslim? Look like Muslim don't and they are not interested in the versions no more. You know When when uh, when you read the Quran, and the Muslim they come with the uh, Zakir Naik. By the way, they ask him about a woman. She asked him, "Why only men they will have whore?" Zakir Naik said, "Brother Thitar, the Thitar he ask you him. Why in Islam they the only men they will get whore? Thitar. In fact, the word whore that not mean female. In fact, the word whore is the plural word. It's the male and female. So in Salah Thitar, you are going to have a lot of male whore." He is saying to her, you will have 72 male to F you. Good news. But if we go in the Quran, just to show you how stupid this guy is, this guy don't speak Arabic. He don't know what he's talking about. And the funny is, not even a single Muslim made a video to get him busted. I mean, he is even teaching their children false information. The Quran says that those are female and they did not bleed. So if those who did not bleed, male and female, the Quran is screwed up. Chapter 55, verse number 56. Wherein both will be those medians restraining their gallants upon their husbands. And there is no human or genie F them and open their humans and make them bleed. According to Zach and Naik, the word whore is a male and female. Christian Prince. First of all, I did not say that the word whole and male and female. In fact, by the way, do you like calamari? What calamari have to do with the calamari? I'm asking about this now. Focus with me. Good and press. I'm very angry. I like that answer you. I let I go and oh, look what Zachary Naik. Answer the question, man. You are the one who said in the front of 20,000 people that this is about male too, not only female. So you Muslim, you are going to F male and they will bleed? And you will open their emails? Good and press. For the ball, we Muslim men all of us have everything. And the proof is me, as an example. Exactly like you have a child, you have a son. How, how your wife, she got the son. Get some prints. I get him downloaded from eBay. 
All of them, they are virgins. So the woman, she's asking him, why only men, they would have virgins? He come to her and he says, no, 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 the word whore is not about only females. It's male and female. And the video is there. I mean, if this is your teacher, who is your donkey? And by the way, just watch the comment. You will see a smart Muslim. He come in the text in the in the comment, and he will say, "By the way, brothers and sisters, this is not Zakir Naik. Zakir Naik, this is his voice. This is Zakir Naik, but Zakir Naik did not call. Like, what the heck? They don't even know I'm joking." I mean, when I saw those comments, I could not believe it that there's somebody think really that Zakir Naik. I'm like I'm claiming that Zakir Naik for real is calling me. Weirdo. Christian Prince. First of all, it's me who called me. And I can prove it. Zakir Naik, how you can call me if you don't know my phone number? Christian Prince, we are Muslims. We do not need a phone number. We connect with the Bril, and the Bril can contact you. And now you are talking to me. Can you tell me how you can talk to Zakir Naik, how the, what the heck is that, man? Christian Prince, I let me pray to Allah. Okay, what do you want to pray for? Tomato, potato, virgins, or boys? Christian Prince, we Muslim, we don't pray for boys because simply Allah, he promised our boys anyway. So we will have boys. And he will not have boys. Like, what do you want to do with the boys? 80,000, Zakir Naik. You claim that they are servant, right? So what the 80,000 will do? Christian Prince, I'm in heaven. I'm going to eat 80,000 sandwich a day. You will eat 80,000 sandwich a day? Exactly. And, okay, so you need 80,000 little boys? Exactly. And each one of them will make a sandwich. Exactly. I mean, how slow the whole day is that guy is just making a sandwich? Exactly. Like, why is so slow? Christian Prince, first of all, the sandwich is so big. It's like from here is to Washington, D.C. What the heck? The sandwich is so long, like from here to Washington, D.C. Exactly. Zach and Nick, stop saying exactly, man. You are driving me nuts. Exactly. Like, what the heck? Why you are going to eat so long sandwich when what is inside the sandwich? Christian Prince, first of all, you will not eat our sandwich. And the Quran said, Allah, he said that you eat your food, I eat mine. What the heck? <laughs> you know, there is a video. It's called uh, uh, the, the, the Description of Paradise in the Dean Show. The guy that is an Egyptian sheikh. So uh, this this uh, uh, redhead convert man, you know, they use those redhead just to promote Islam. So he asked him uh, to talk about heaven, and the the Egyptian man he said, Egyptian sheikh, uh, okay, nobody can really describe heaven for you. And now let me describe heaven. For you you're just stupid idiot. You just said nobody can describe heaven, and two seconds after you said, let me describe heaven for you. So I played this video in a church in the Philippines. There's one guy, he's so big, you know, he's really huge. And he was dying from laughing, and the chairs are made from plastic. It's not it's not a church, you know. We are we, I was doing seminar in a in a in a like in a stadium. It's a stadium actually. And the stadium was full. So this guy he could not control himself. And he like I think he broke the leg of chair or he fell down with the chair. But when he fell down because he's so big, uh, I don't want to use the word fat. He opened his hands to balance himself, and all the line next to him with, fell down in the church. Uh, the people of the church, all of them, they fell down because everyone he grabbed the second one next to him just to balance himself, and all they fell down. But people, they die laughing watching this video. And the funny is. If you watch the video alone, you do not notice how stupid it is. And that's what I find weird. You watch it with me, you die laughing. I have a guy, he said to me, you know what? I saw this video before, but man, you, you killed us. You know, Philippines is very hot and they're, they're, because too many people, they, they, they breathe. Uh, you know, it's not made for such a crowd. Uh, because we have chairs in the floor, not only not only the stadium. 
So he said, you, you, you know, you killed us with laughing. You cannot hold ourselves. I, I saw this video before, but I never, I, I never laugh. I, you know, I, I did not even see anything funny. How, how you do that? He said, because you don't, you don't listen carefully. You don't, you don't see, you, know, you, sh you should learn how to dig. And this is what happened to all of us. We read, but we don't read really. Like, look at this. Millions of people read it, but nobody sees what's the stupidity there. Like, have you ever heard of a God? He promised me to sit in a couch. Couch. This is the reward of the believer who died for him. I will recline in a couch. And I will have a silk made in Iran. You see, in Arabic here, it says Stabrak. Stabrak is like saying Gucci. It's a brand name. It's not silk. It's not word means silk. It's a brand of silk made in Iran. Very expensive. So this God is taking the word of the Persian, putting it in Arabic, promising them that they will wear this clothes in heaven. He could not find something better. And not only that, because Muhammad trying to make a, like a, a, a rap a song. So he, he want to end the word with two, like in, in, you know, zawjan, tukadiban, and then he says, jannatain. Suddenly, a Muslim, you have two, two, two heavens. Like, what the heck? We will have two heavens, each one of us? Look at this. Just because you want to end, you, you need to add the letter E in at the end to fit with the pre previous and the, and the after. So suddenly, you are going to live in two heavens. Like we asked the Abdul, where do you live now? Which heaven? He said, one leg here and one leg there. I feel sorry for the one who is between your legs now, what he will see, because your legs is open. The, those heavens, you know, Muhammad he described the heaven tree is one handed year, you will walk underneath of it, brother. And the three brother have leaves made of gold. And then Muhammad, you know, guys, if I want to continue talking, we'll stand until tomorrow. Shall I go or we'll finish? I suppose I was leaving an hour ago. You hate me, don't you? Look at this. If you ask Muslims, where is the Euphrates River? They will say to you, it is uh, in, the, in, in the north of uh, Antalya, which is occupied from, from, from Greece, which is supposedly Turkey today. Okay, where is the Nile River? They will say to you, it is coming from like, you know, the Blue River, the White River, blah, 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 Victoria, uh, a lake, etc. Okay, where is that in Africa? No oh boy. According to Muhammad, the Nile River and the Euphrates and Suhan wa Jihan, which are rivers in the borders of Syria and Iraq, they are under the tree of Allah, brother. In the seven heaven, brother. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh. Somebody saying Zakir Naik lies in the front of 1,000 people and not one of them call him out for lying. Muslims don't call somebody defend Islam a liar. They will never do that. Even if they knew that you are a liar. Like, do you see anybody is, is exposing Uthman or Mimi Hijab after he have a debate with David Wood? Nobody. Nobody. Anyone, as long as you defend Islam, you can lie as much as you want. So look at this, Muhammad, here. The Messenger of Allah, he said, and what happened? Sihan wa Jihan and the Euphrates and the Nile River, all from the rivers of Jannah. But you might say, maybe it's just a you know, statement that they are nice rivers. No. When he went to the seven heaven in the top of the seven galaxies, in the top of a flying donkey, he found under the tree of Allah four rivers. One is above, two above and two underneath. And this is the story here in front of you. He go up to heaven, he first in the first heaven, he see... Uh, he see Adam, he see Abraham, he see Isa, he see Moses, you see, and then he arrived to the tree brother. The prophet he saw four river. 
in the heaven. Look, 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 look. And that he saw for river, which follow, flow from the root of the looted tree, brother. I love the looted tree. I love the looted tree. Now I know why in Korea there's a there's a mall in every corner. It's called Lotte, 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 Lotte Shopping Mall. Lotte. I think this is where it's coming from. Lotte. Okay. Looted tree. For farthest limits, two main fast river and two hiding rivers, said Jibril. He said to Jibril, what are these rivers, man? Jibril, he said to him, oh, okay. The two rivers, uh, they are rivers from paradise and regards the two manifest ones, they are the Nile and the Euphrates. Like, what the heck? The rivers of Euphrates and the Nile River, they are connected, brother, to the sky beyond the seven galaxies and the seven midget. That's deep. Hey, Muslims, are you sure your prophet, he went to the seven heaven, he did not go to Ethiopia and Turkey? I mean, he's saying to you, he found those rivers under the lotus tree. And this is where they come from. By the way, your prophet is so good in geography. You know, I was the best one in my classroom in geography. Like I remember when the teacher he asked me, "Where is uh, what you know? Where is Euphrates?" You know, for me, I thought about it. Like Euphrates, Euphrates. Come on, it's coming. You know. So I said to him, "The word Euphrates is coming from the Euro. It's in the European Union. So Euphrates, okay. So youth is coming from the word Euro, youth, which means youth." And fatigue, which mean, uh, leave me alone. The the teacher he was like impressed. I said, wow, that's that's deep. I said, yeah, I get that from the Greek mythology. You know, I I learned the philosophy from the Greek people. He said, what about the Nile River? He said, well, I cannot talk about politics. He said, well, why it's about politics? He said, we know you know the thing. And he was impressed by the answer, because I got him busted. I just said, you know the thing. By saying you know the thing, that's mean you know the thing, that's mean you do not, not question the thing. And this is what Joe Biden he used. The second he say you know the thing, that's mean that's it. It's over. It's explained, it's clear, and that's it. Loot a tree. Look, what the heck? And not only that, there is a house in the heaven of Allah. It's called Al Baytul Ma'mur. What is that? Hey Muslims, there is a Kaaba in the heaven too. So we have two Kaaba. Me. Two Kaaba. And every day, brother, 70,000 angels, they enter the house of Allah. What they do there? Allah, he do circumcision for them, I guess. Look at this, look at this. Hmm. This is the story of Muhammad. He received a dish of uh, wisdom and a dish of uh, faith, and the angels they put it in his chest, brother. By the way, me myself, I never went to school. I got this from Zabril. He cut my chest from here to here, which means to my pocket, you know, my side pocket, not my testicles. Thank you. I don't touch it, please. And then, you know, he brought a dish of uh, faith and dish of wisdom. And he put them in my chest, brother. I mean, have you ever heard of such? It, it doesn't matter where you go. This religion is, is just made of stupidity. A dish of faith and a dish of wisdom. And here, he reached the seven heaven. Okay. Hold on, where is, where is, the, where is the house? al Baytul Ma'mur. I don't see it in English. Al Bayt al Mamur. Look, they don't translate it. Look, look at this. Look at this. Do you know why they did not translate? Anyone knows why they did not translate this? So then Al Bayt al Mamur was raised up to me. What the heck is that? Raised up to you? Why it was in the basement? And what is Al Bayt al Mamur? Bayt is an Aramaic word. Okay, what Mamur mean? What is this? Why Allah he have a house there? 
Is that the bedroom? And why there's four rivers coming from underneath? Are you sure not three? Are you guys enjoying uh, being here with us? Because you enjoy being here with us, I decide to give you 50 prayer today. Can you believe it that the Muslim, they pray today five prayer, but in fact, Allah, he gave Muhammad 50 prayer. 50 prayer. Are you sure? Then 50 prayer daily were made obligatory for me. Like what the heck? How they become five? The story says that Allah, he gave him 50 prayer as an order. And then Muhammad, he was going down stairs from Allah, heaven. Uh, he met with Musa. You know, Musa is a Jew. You know, those Jews, they are very good in mathematics. So Musa, he said to Muhammad, Khabibi Muhammad. Tell me, Khabibi, what happened to you, Khabibi? So Muhammad, he said to him, hey, I'm so happy, excited. Allah, you order me to pray 50 times. Musa, he said to him, Khabibi, are you stupid, Khabibi? How you can pray 50 times, Khabibi? The day is 24 hours, Khabibi. You cannot pray 50 times a day. To do evolution, you need 20 minutes, Khabibi. And then you need 20, 15 minutes to do the prayer, Khabibi. And how many days you are, how many hours you have to sleep, Khabibi? So Muhammad, he, he scratched his ass. He said, oh, you are right. He went back to Allah. And then he asked Allah for discount. And then Allah, he said, okay, you know what? 40, 40, 45, 45, like in the Philippines. Muhammad, he went back. He found Musa's. Musa's, like, look like Musa's, he had nothing to do. You know, like, it's my, it might be what was the weekend, you know? So, like, he's bored. So Musa, he was like waiting for him. Khabibi Muhammad, what happened, Khabibi? So uh, uh, Muhammad says to him, Hey, Allah, he gave me this count, five prayer. Musa, look at him, you idiot. Khabibi Muhammad, 45 prayer, Khabibi? You can't pray 54, 40 prayer, Khabibi. Are you stupid or what, Khabibi? So Muhammad, he went back again to Allah. And he asked him for discount. And each time he go back, Musa, he asked him to go back and ask for a discount. <laughs> <laughs> so from 50 prayer to five because of a Jew true story look the story is here and it's funny is like you know Musa he's talking to Muhammad like talking to a kid go back go back okay go back to your Lord mighty and sublime and uh what the heck? So I went back to the, my Lord, the mighty, the sublime, and sublime, and the reduced the portion of it. Then I came back to Moses, and he said, Go back, man. Go back, you idiot. You did nothing. What the heck with you? Still a lot, man. So Muhammad is give like wine, 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 win, wine, win, win, go back, come back, 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 until the 50 became five. True story. And you people don't believe that Muhammad is a prophet of God. What's wrong with you? Isn't it obvious that this is God? And by the way, Musa is dead. What Musa is doing there? Isn't it your Muslim says that the first one will be resurrected in the day of judgment is Muhammad? So is, is Musa resurrected? Muhammad, he met with Musa. Really? Who is here for the first time? If you are here for the first time, give me one. If you don't mind. It doesn't cost you money. Unless you are a Muslim, you will think you are giving us money if you give us one. Who is here for the first time? Give us one, please. There's only one person here first time. Come on, guys, don't give me one if you are not here. For I'll block you. Honestly, I know those names who gave one. You are a cheater like Muhammad now. 
So I'm asking who is first here for the first time. I'm serious. All right. The one is here for the first time. I feel sorry for you. Because what will happen, you will be addicted. You will stop eating with your family. And you will not watch TV with the family. And you will come here and spend two hours with us. I feel sorry for you. I'm just warning you. You will be addicted because, and you will get fat because you will love a lot and that will make you gain weight. I'm warning you. And don't send your wife to text me in Skype and say, because of you, I'm going to get divorced, which happened before. I said to her, like, why, why you are getting divorced? She said, my husband, he want to eat, he's listening to you. He don't, he don't know, he, he don't talk to us. So, <laughs> don't blame me. <laughs> I'm what <more>, disclaimer. <laughs> you know the story of uh, the story of Harut and Marut, which is supposedly make the husband and the wife fight, right? But if you think about it, I mean, how silly, how stupid that the Muslim they say that their God teach ethic, mm. and this God he sent two angels to teach black magic to cause the man and the wife fight i don't know if you work as a lawyer and divorce lawyer you should be appreciating harut and marut actually if i'm a lawyer i have a degree in law as you know i will put a statues for harut and marut behind my table i will be appreciate them because all the cases will come from them so look at this allah he sent two angels where in the babylon tower makes sense the Babylon Tower at that time was the highest sky rock, a sky building, you know. There's a swimming pool in the top, helicopter can come down. So he chose the perfect one. In the Babylon Tower, Allah, he sent two angels, Harut and Marut. And those angels, they open a school of Haributar. And they say, disclaimer, disclaimer, anything you learn here is in your responsibility okay disclaimer we teach you how to make the wife and the husband fight and get divorced what the heck this is look look at this uh, and those angels uh, people learn by which they cause separation between man and his wife if there is any one of you here is divorced Listen, it was Harut and Marut. They caused you to divorce your wife. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't her fault. It was Harut and Marut. I'm telling you, I'm warning you. You cannot fix it. You might think that your wife, she was bad or your husband was bad. No, no. It was Harut and Mr. Marut. There's a song actually, very famous song from the ancient day. It says, uh, you know the thing, you know? You know the thing, you know the thing, you know the thing. Harut and Marut, you know the thing. And you know, and then after we know all the thing, we found that Suleiman, he have a ring and he controlled the the, 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 the the magic and he have a diving Satan to give him rubies and jewelry from the, from the ocean. And this is the Quran, the Muslim, they say it's the most amazing. This is why when we ask them who dare to call me, they don't. And when we try to show them the interpretation, they don't want it. Or we show them the hadith, they refuse it. Because Islam is an embarrassment. The Lord of the Rain? But is that a Harut? I wonder, I saw this guy before, where? No, no, this is not Nancy but Lucy. Ah, no, no. I, you know, I, I, you know, I was like, maybe, but no. I know, this is not her too. I mean, close. Do we have any Muhammadan here? Do you have any comment? 
let us take those pictures. You know, people want to go to bed soon, later. Let us put something more uh, appealing. You know? Oh, this is where Prophet of Allah, he went to heaven and he found those stuff there. Whew. Look at this. Brother. So I hope today we have a good time. And as you see, we don't have any Muslim to whom they don't dare because they knew even if they are having four corners, I will make them what if they have four corners, I will make them what? If they have four corners, I can make them a square. Uh, they don't care, I will make them a square. Uh, okay, I just made Quran. Man, how I can do that? Any Abdul? This is Muhammad receiving 50 prayer from Allah. This is Muhammad asking Allah, how in the world, I will, Allah was smoking when he gave him the Quran, you know, when he gave him the order to pray 50 times. So Muhammad was looking like, what the heck? You know, but Allah was smoking hashish. And you know what hashish can do? Which prophet in Islam has Yahweh in his name? All the, any, anyone have Yah, like Zechariah, Yahya, you know, all of those is Yahweh. This is a summarize of uh, Yahweh. No? Yeah, this is, this is better, this is better. I want to go to this, uh, to this, uh, uh, you know, this place there. And this woman, she have a sword and uh, she is what? She is an elf? She's what? I don't know. Like she is, I don't know what she is. Yeah. And look, look here. This is here when Muhammad he arrived to the. Oosh, look at this. This is the. Ah, now we found where is the dam of Gog and Magog, and Yasser Kadi could not find it. Tell, tell everybody, tell everybody, we found it, we found it, brother. Gog and Magog, look here, here, here. We have it. It's here, it's here. Yeah. What elf mean? Elf lam mean? Hmm. So this is the, this is here where is Zulkarnain, the man with the two horn, they order, they ask him, please, can you build a dam between us and people of Gog and Magog? And now he put the rocks made of uh, steel and copper. And by the way, the steel he used there, it doesn't rust because it's made in Home Depot. Okay, Home Depot, they give you steel, it says non-rustable. What the heck, what kind of English is English? I just made it. Non-rustable. Okay, so, uh, so, so are you sure he uses steel? He used iron? And supposedly this dam will stay there until the day of judgment. And there's a trillions, not billions, behind it. And they cannot attack us, brother. Maybe Erdogan can solve the problem and use his drone to find them. Alif Lam Mim Boni M. What Boni M, man? Just focus, focus. This is a serious story. You know what Boni M? Bonnie M, Bonnie D, Bonnie G. I don't care. This is a serious story. This is real. All those stories are real, you know. Don't don't listen to those Christians and Jews and the Hindus, you know. I mean, come on. Look at his look. I look at the prophet. I look at the moon. I look at the prophet. I look at the moon. I look at the prophet. I look at the moon. And then I said, oh, Subhanallah, the Prophet is so sexy, more than the moon. Do we have any Muslim here have any objection of what we just said? Previously or now? Oh, look, look. Ah, he became a Christian now. He is Santa Claus. Amar Rabbi Amar. He must be, what his name? Kandolf? Kandolf. He was watching my program and became a Christian. And look, 
What is that? The Hanika in behind, he became a Jew too. What? He's a Messianic Jew. Oh boy. Ah, and this will remind me about the chapter of the elephant. You know that Quran, they have a chapter, it's called the chapter of the elephant. And supposedly, there's an army of Ethiopian came to destroy the Kaaba and they have elephants with them. Now, if you go and check how much water elephant need, you will not believe how in the world the elephant can cross the, the desert of Saudi Arabia. The desert of Saudi Arabia is not just a desert. It's a dead desert. It's a hell. And there's no rivers. So how this elephants can walk in such a desert? He will die after a few hours. You know, elephant, as you know, I am from Indonesia originally. You know, even though like, you know, my dad, uh, he told me like originally, like, my, like I mean, as you know, we are coming from uh, Sri Lanka or because my grandfather, Adam, he landed there. And then like, you know, in Sri Lanka, uh, my grandfather Adam, you know, when he landed in Sri Lanka, uh, he told uh, my grandmother, she was very beautiful, by the way, she was the most beautiful woman in the earth. Her name is Eve. Uh, and uh, I don't know, like, you know, they told me at that time she attended like, uh, like there is like a competition for women uh, who is the most beautiful. So my grandmother Eve, she, uh, she was number one because she was the only woman at that time, you know. So anyway, like uh, my grand, uh, I'm so proud of them, you know. So my grandmother, uh, uh, Eve, she won the, uh, the, uh, the competition. And uh, Adam, my grandfather, he was the most uh, handsome uh, man in the world too. He was the only one anyway. So anyway, like, you know, like, so, and you know, the, uh, okay. And the end of the story, thank you very much for listening. <laughs> I mean, why my stories don't make sense? And this is what Muhammad said. Muhammad said that, Adam, he landed in Sri Lanka, and Eve, she landed in Jeddah. <laughs> like, what the heck? I mean, why Allah, he made Adam, he landed in Sri Lanka? Let me, what's called, hold on. Sri Lanka, who, anyone here from Sri Lanka? I want to go to Sri Lanka, actually. It's a beautiful country. I will go to Sri Lanka and I will made I will marry Sri Lankan women, and then I will get a free tea, it's a free Sri Lankan fancy tea for the rest of my life. That's it. Well, you know, I I type the word Sri Lanka. What is the tea? I'm not finding the tea. I saw I see an elephant. It's okay, you know, later we will find the tea, no problem, you know. It's okay. I mean, tea is later, it's okay. I mean, it's not time for tea anyway. It's getting very late now here, you know. Yeah. So, you know, like it's in Sri Lanka, a Prophet Adam, he landed in Sri Lanka. You can search the video, by the way, of Mufti Mink. He speak about how Prophet Adam, he landed in Sri Lanka. <laughs> and, you know... And how Adam he was able to walk all the way and come all the way to uh, uh, to to India because Sri Lanka is an island; it's not connected. I mean, how the guy he came all the way to Saudi Arabia? Man, that's deep. How many here we have like Arab or Middle Eastern Christians? Give me one if you are a Middle Eastern Christian, Arab or Egyptian, Coptic or anything. Do we have any here, Middle Eastern Christians? I'm the only Middle Eastern Christian here. Ah, okay. I'm the only Middle Eastern Christian here. You know, by the way, do you know why they call us Middle Eastern? Anyone knows why? Bindovar, you are. Lion, you are. Alfred, Chadder, Habib, Ada, Joe Baba. Oh, we have many, man. I thought I'm the only one here. Now I feel better. You know? 
هنا إزاعة البي بي سي. You know guys, do you know do you know what happened? What, what this uh, this uh, brother here, B M B, he wrote in Arabic. نحن هنا we are here. Uh, this remind me when Muhammad received the chapter of Al Fatiha. Anyone remember how he received it? Invite, invite more, more Middle Eastern, especially those who live in the abroad, so they can, you know, they speak English, you know, uh, because uh, you know Middle Eastern not necessarily they speak English. Invite them so they can learn. Muslim don't fool them. But anyone remember how Muhammad received Al Fatiha? Anyone remember? I should make a channel in Arabic, by the way. If I make a channel in Arabic, people will die laughing and they will have heart attack. And all of you, you will have a, you, you will have in the same day a funeral, <laughs> and then your children will sue me. You killed my dad. My dad was healthy before he attended your program, and then they will take a picture for you, before and after. Anta muzia, anta muzion wa ana muzia. Salim ala Abd Sami alamia. How well? So listen, guys. When Muhammad he receive the Fatiha. He was doing poo, poo You know, I could not really believe that the Muslims, they will say such a thing. That the Prophet of God, he received the prayer, the most important prayer, the Muslim they recite five times a day, while he was doing poo, poo And the angel, like Muhammad, he go in the, in the field, for sure maybe there's an elephant, he's looking at his ass, but elephant don't know, I mean, he's not a human, it's okay. Elephant, they will not look. Actually, elephant, they are very shy. Ask me, you know. Uh, so Muhammad, he went in the field to do poo-poo. And then he heard the voice says, Oh, Muhammad. Muhammad, he run, you know, and his panty between his legs. You know, like, what the heck? So the, the story says that each time Muhammad, he go out to do poo-poo at night, he hear the sound saying to him, Oh, Muhammad. So uh, he said to him next time when you hear the sound stop don't run finally Muhammad he went to do poo, poo and he decided not to run as the guy told him and then the angel told him recite to him the chapter of Al-Fatiha brothers and sisters if you claim that Muhammad is not a special, unique person, I feel sorry for you. You are in denial. The only prophet who have a connection with his God during the poo, poo time, it was the prophet. This is the chapter 1, verse number 1, and this is the book of Asbab al-Nuzul. Asbab al-Nuzul means the reason for the verses to come down. CP, your sound effect R. What sound effect? I'm not making sound effect. I make effect sound. There's a huge different. You see, in English, they say things, it's weird. Like, you know, they say to you, beautiful house, which is very confusing. Because how do you know which house we are talking about? Like a beautiful house? What beautiful? What house? Okay. So I do effect sound, not sound effect. And I will tell you what the different. If you fart, and now like imagine yourself, you are Prophet Muhammad, and you are going now to receive a voice coming from the angels of real and you are farting which means you are making effect sound not sound effect because it's real sound effect is fake effect sound is like reaction for the real sound which is happening so now you are sitting and then the effect sound is happening <laughs> and then Muhammad he receive a call but at that time there is no ring as you know you know so like avoid the ring it's not part of the story. I'm just to explain to you. Because most of you are uh, slow. You don't understand. I'm just, you know, assumption, assumption. So it's it says here, when the Prophet, Allah give him peace, whenever he went out, the Muslim here, the falsely translate says went out. What went out meant went out to do poo, poo Whenever he went out, and the reason he gets scared, because at night. So whenever he went out, tabarraza, it says in Arabic, tabarraza or tabarraza, whenever he went out, he used to hear someone calling him. And this is not sound effect. This is effect sound. Take a note. Please learn English, please. Learn English, please. I can't, I can't take it no more. So, used to hear someone calling him. Oh, the prophet. 
Oh, Muhammad. And whenever he heard this, he used to flee like, what the heck? I would love to have a camera at that time. I record Muhammad running and his feet is touching his ass. Isn't it amazing? You are a prophet of Allah. And now you hear the voice coming from this guy. And the voice saying, Oh Muhammad. By the way, the Oh Muhammad, it's a sound effect. Because, come on, Arabic, in Arabic we don't say, oh, Muhammad, what the heck is that? In Arabic it says, ya Muhammad. So Muhammad, he hear this, bing, like Sheikh Uthman when they showed him the Quran. It's fake. So, you know, the ketchup is all over. And he run inside the house, he closed the, he closed the door. Like, what the heck? How in the world and why he's running away? Any Muslim can tell me. Do we have any Muslim can tell me about the effect sound, not the sound effect? How many of you, you know what? Sometimes I wish I can see the faces of people who they are listening. I'm, I'm so happy to put a smile in your face. But you cannot defeat Allah who can make you fart, yet you receive Quran. There's a huge difference between what I can do and what Allah can do. You are doing now poo poo, yet you are receiving the revelation. You is there a connection? There's a strong connection between poo poo and revelation to you. Allah could not wait until Muhammad finished his poo poo. I mean, come on! And why each time you go out, why you don't call him inside the house? What the heck? <clears throat> oh, we have a brother here. His name is in Chinese. Let me read for you Chinese, by the way. I read Chinese, by the way. I don't know if you know that. I speak all languages. You know, like uh, I have my cousin. His name is Al-Hassan. He is the grandson of a prophet Muhammad. He speaks 79 million languages. Some stories says more. I don't know, you know. But I don't speak that much languages, to be honest with you. I mean, 79 million is too much. I think I speak like, I think 78 million you know, so here our friend here, like from Chimon, 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 Kiki. Okay. Oh, Kiki. Um, okay. Kiki is a kind, like, you know, it's like if you bring some uh, cuckoo and, uh, you know, like with some spice, uh, this is why he's crying, the guy. You know, you know, they see yeah, Kiki and he's crying because, because something like it's too much Kiki, which is like being uh, too much poo <laughs> Kaka, kaka. <laughs> So anyway, I'm not going to translate for you what he's saying there because it's obvious he is saying to to you like, uh, you know, like whatever, you know, the thing, you know, it's clear. So thank you very much for, for the translation. <laughs> so Muslims, can you believe it that this is what the Muslim wrote about their prophet? So if this is what the Muslim says, is what the Christian prince will write. If I am the one who is saying this, they will say he's a liar. It doesn't say that, CP. They are the one who says that. <laughs> oh boy, cuckoo, kiki. What the heck with this religion? Uh, <clears throat> what, <laughs> whatever drugs I'm smoking, I don't smoke. I never smoke all my life. I don't smoke. I never smoke. I'm too smart to smoke, my friend. If you smoke, I, I feel sorry for you, really. This is not an act. Let's, let's, let's take a break from Muhammad. Honestly, if you are really smoking, ask yourself, why you even smoke? You know, once I went like with a friend, uh, you know, like, you know, to the, like camping. So he have his wife with him and we have a fire. And then I took, he have a box of cigarette. I took it and threw it in the fire. He got upset. Why you did that? This is the only box I have until tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. I said, you are going to burn it anyway. I just burn it for you. So really, brothers, sisters, why you smoke? You will burn it. You are burning your money. You are burning your health. I'm not, I'm just I'm not schooling you, but just do the smart. Just be smart. Do things for a reason. Don't buy unless you need. Don't spend unless you need. Don't drink unless you need. And don't eat unless you need. 
anything more than that is harmful which means if you keep eating and you do not need it you will get fat you will gain weight you will you will cause your your health problems same for drinking you know i mean uh, same as spending same anything you have to have a balance in your life don't be foolish like muhammad but this is my advice to you it's up to you uh you are only joking alfred no problem my friend you know i make fun of myself don't worry about it i know you are joking by the way i will block you later <laughs> we are arab we accept democracy so brothers if you say speak negative about me i will never be upset i will just block you okay we are very democratic people saddam hussein is my uncle and al Kazafi is my cousin we have a proof proof you know we are number one people in the world for a human right yeah. <clears throat> okay, we are number one people for, uh, you know, uh, animal rights. <clears throat> okay, we are, um, we are number one people for, uh, you know, uh, women rights. <coughs> okay, okay. Uh, we are, okay, you know what? We are number one people, uh, you know, uh, for, uh, okay, I have to go now. You know the thing. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, ask yourself a question. If Islam is so good, why those countries are screwed? Honestly, if this religion is so good, can you find me one Muslim country is not screwed like hell? I mean, Islam is so wonderful. But so what's happening there? Me. You know, like when you watch the American American election, it's kind of fun, by the way, because like anyone say whatever you want, you insult the president, you insult the, the Congress, you insult the senators, you insult the government, even a police in America, if a police come to you, you can insult him. Uh, in the Middle East, brother, we have the perfect election. 99.99999 elected the president. And the one who did not, he was going to, but he died before he arrived. For sure, he did not die in the police station. Yeah, and they talk about, uh, they, they make fun of the, the Western election. Oh boy. Uh, I made your day. <laughs> it's made in China. <laughs> You know, they could, the Muslim, like, did you see Mimi Hijab is standing in front of the embassy and he take his T-shirt? Don't you know that his T-shirt is made in China? I mean, look at the hypocrisy of those Muslims. You know, like, you know, to protect the Muslim right in China and we strike. And then all of them, they never stop buying from China. They never stop visiting China. Their kings, they're, and the only one who have sanctions on China is the Western. Not a single Muslim country have sanctions on China's. Indonesia, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Emirat, Bahrain, Qatar, you name it. The most hypocrite people ever exist between mankind. That is the truth. Oh boy. Please discuss a book written by Theopones. I don't know what the book you are talking about. I'm not familiar with the name. What, what book is that? Who is Siphonis? Not sure. Uh, <clears throat> you know, actually, when I uh, when I went to China last time, you know, like in the West, they keep saying to you, Chinese, China, you know, it's a... But when I went there, I was surprised, I mean, how advanced their, their, their cities. You know, it's way advanced than the USA. And for sure, not all of it. I mean, there's areas which is very poor. Uh, obviously, there's no just to. But China is not what people say, really. It's not the communist you think. Like we know, we use the word communist as a, like, you know, a government uh, own everything people don't own. There's billionaires in China. I found there's like Rolls Royce, uh, BMWs, Mercedes, most expensive. Uh, there is There is a lot of, you know, Businessmen, 
it's, so China is a communist, but it's different kind of communist. It's not the one you know about the Soviet Union. So what they don't explain to you that the when when the Chinese they speak about communist, their communist is have nothing to do with the communist the way we know. It's totally different. Way different. And this is why until now they do not collapse, you know, because they call it communist, but in fact, there is some they make billions, if not trillions, in China. But anyway, you haven't been in China since 2006? Man, I went to China, it's full of Chinese. I'm serious. You see, you come to America, I mean, everybody is from somewhere. In China, there's nothing but Chinese. You look right, Chinese. You look left, Chinese. You look behind you, Chinese. Actually, I have a video of me. I was crossing the street in China. I thought I'm going to be arrested. There was like a police in every corner and everybody, they are looking at me because I was, I was using the camera, the phone. Christian Prince, I, I want you to uh, to explain to me uh, So our friend here is asking, can you explain to me, I think he meant, can you explain to me why uh, chapters have names of animals and insect. Uh, we we answer about that because simply the Muslims, uh, the Quran is a very silly book, and they look in the chapter and they find what this chapter have uh, something, uh, you know, to quote, like the chapter of speaking about the bees. So we say the bees. Uh, the chapter, this chapter speak about you know there's something mentioned about the ant. So we mention the ant. But if you think about it, you will see that uh, that is kind of confusing. Why? Because you might find the same topic mentioned many times in the Quran. That's why they try to find some unique. Like as example, if you want to call a chapter the chapter of Moses, that means we should have the story of Moses there. But the Quran is a messed up book. So if you go and search for the word Moses, you will find Moses' stories all over the place. So here, the chapter of the 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 the, the ants. Uh, is speaking about the birds, but speaking about the ants, speaking to the ants, and Solomon he heard the ant. So the Muslim they mention they they gave the name uh, to the chapter, the ant chapter. The same for the rest. Yeah, it's a kind of a zoo. Thank you, Jason. Uh, any other question? Well, I think we have. We are here for many hours now. How many hours? We are here for three hours and forty-two minutes. You know, I, I want to ask you a favor. If you guys can help, who of you can, like, just make a special channel? And I will send you people to your channel to subscribe as soon as you do that. Uh, like you see, when a Muslim, as an example, he, he, he make a comment. And then I answer, answer him in the comment, like here. If you, if you like, I'm giving you an idea. I think this will be a great channel. You can just, from my videos, collect, sh make short videos, like, you know, depend on the answer what the Muslims say and what my answer. That's it. And post it, give it a title, depend in the, in what he in what, like here. The guy is saying, uh, in the Bible it says, brother must marry, etc. So you can give it a title for that topic. Like how a Christian prince answer this question or a Christian prince answering how the, etc. If you do that, I promise you, I will send you a lot of subscribers right away. But what I want you to do before I send you subscribers, Make, let us say, make ready 50 videos, all right? At least so people, they can go and see something, you know? Short videos, as we say, like, you know, those comments. And my videos is full of them. You will find a lot of hilarious things. And I think this will be a very successful channel. And by the way, I don't mind if you even make money by adding advertising to it. God bless you. I will be happy for you. So if any one of you make it, I will tell people to go and subscribe because that helped Christians 
to learn how to answer the Muhammadan. All right. Uh, it is danger in here. Well, I'm not asking you to do it if you live in a Muslim country. I mean, there's tons of people who don't live in Islamic countries, right? I'm asking the one who can do it, and you know, you can, you can judge based on your ability and uh, liability too. All right. Why are Muslims saying that God cannot be human? If this is refutes the Almighty power of God, yeah, actually, uh, yeah, this is a good, good logic, because if a Muslim he says to you that God cannot, you see the word cannot, cannot, that's mean God cannot be God, because can, can, is what God is about. Can God do this? If God cannot do, it doesn't matter what, even if you want to be silly, like, you know, can God uh, eat? Can God drink? Can go to the bathroom? Can God uh, sing? Can God dance? Can God, you can be silly. You can be silly as much as you want. But the word almighty mean God can do whatever he want. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. There's things is impossible for us because we are normal people, a human. There's things I cannot do. There's things you cannot do. But that because of our nature, not because. We are God. We are our nature. We are limited. Our limited to ability. We are limited. Uh, how, how many hours I can stay without sleep? How many hours I can? I can. But can God sleep? Why not? Can God sleep and yet He's in control of the of the heaven and earth? Yes. Why not? Because is the command of the earth and the heaven is because He is His. He have eyes. They are open. If you remember the story. Uh, when Jesus was with the disciple and the storm came and Jesus was what? It says he was asleep. Correct? Yet Jesus, he controlled the storm. He was relaxed. They got so scared. They got so, you know, like, oh, you know, Jesus, he proved to us that he is in control and he has power over nature. And not only that, he walk in the water. Like, you know what? I can say, oh, storm, stop. And suddenly, stop. But maybe because the wind stopped at that moment. Maybe, you know. Maybe it happened like I was lucky. But to walk in the water, that is a different story. And to ask my disciple to walk in the water, that is another story. So the question is, when a Muslim, he says, how God can be? Well, that can be questioned to their God. But how come you don't ask the question about how Jesus can be human, yet he's alive and then now? How Jesus can be human, just as a human, as they say, and yet he make blind see. He did not give him medicine. How he can make people come from the, from the grave? How even he create from the, from the mud the bird, according to the Quran? As you see, with Jesus, nothing is impossible. With Allah, everything is impossible. And that's what the Bible says. Nothing is impossible with God. You know, when uh, even we, we as a human, uh, when we sleep, we are not really sleep. I mean, we have tons of sensors are working. Is that correct? We have maybe millions of sensors. I don't know, billions. Every little tiny part of your skin, there's a sensor there. So let us say you are asleep and something walk in your skin. Don't you feel it right away? You feel it, right? 
didn't say an ant, cockroach, whatever, you know, but you are asleep, but you will feel it. But you are not God. So if we as a human, we have billions of sensors, our ears, our skin, even your hair, if you, if you touch my hair, I feel it. The hair, you know, supposedly the hair is like the, this, like the end of it is a dead area. It's not really living area. That's why when you cut it by the scissor, you don't feel pain. Because it's dead. Still you feel. So you as a human, even when you are asleep, you have billions of sensors make you feel. How about God? So the Muslims, because they are silly and they are bankrupt, they try to make imaginary God fit with their imaginary logic. And the reason I say imaginary, because if I ask the Muslim the same logic they ask me, can your God stand the question you are asking? Is my account in TikTok still working? I thought they blocked me, didn't they? That's why I did not go there anymore. Why does Allah need uh, to help him to make decisions? Well, you know, like, you know, the whole Quran, if you open from the first page to the last page, all the Quran is silly, stupid. Nothing makes sense there. Yeah, yeah, the, you know, the Muslim right away, they, they blocked me, even though I did not say anything there. You know, I did not say anything, really. They, they, they talked right away, they blocked me. But TikTok is way more ugly than, than uh, other uh, companies. You know? Well, those elephants, they convert to Islam, by the way. And you know, if I'm a Muslim, I will say, no, those elephants, they become a Christian, they are doing baptism now. <laughs> you know, uh, once an idiot, he came to me and he's a sheikh. He, you know, he claimed to be a sheikh. All of them, they are sheikh. He said, Christian prince, what kind of religion you need to wash yourself by water and do baptism? Huh? I said to him, Abdul, are you sure that this is wrong? He said, I'm absolutely sure. I said, are you sure? He said, come on. Stop avoiding answering the question. What kind of religion do I said, are you sure? So, you know, I make them repeat, are you sure three times? And he was very sure. And then I said to him, what if I show you that Allah do baptism in the Quran? He said, what? No, actually, I did not say Quran. I, I said, in Da'if Hadith, Da'if Hadith. The second I said to him, Da'if, he said, this Da'if Hadith, man, Da'if, I don't take Hadith, Da'if. I said, okay, what about the Quran? <laughs> so the Muslims, you know, they have, they are ignorant, like their prophet. They do not know their religion. They do not know yours. And yet they come to school you. You know, they copy paste. They have an uh, atheist website. Oh, there is an, uh, a mistake here. Uh, how many, what was the age of this king when he became a king? The religion of the dummies. And that's why they don't dare to come to me, you know. They will they will only debate uh, a person, he have no knowledge of Islam. If if you are a person who have no knowledge of Islam, they, you, the Muslims, uh, they will line up. They will line up to debate you. you know, like the, if you, If you open your phone or, you know, they will be all over you. Look at the translation here. They don't even translate. Chapter 2, verse 138. The best of baptism is the baptism of Allah. 
Uh, all right. I think we have enough for today. Did we uh, did we enjoy? Did we have a good time? I hope so. Today is a Friday night. For me, it's getting late here. Uh, I hope you guys you have a good time. Uh, you know, uh, our program is a kind of a funny comedy, right? But we learn, and this is the good thing about it. You go to school, it would be going to be boring. The teacher is boring. You cannot even stand for 15 minutes. Here we sit and we stand listening for an hour, two hours, three hours, and still people stay, people enjoy it, and people love it. For we do many things in the same time. But remember always, we are not here to waste our time. We are here to empower ourselves. Knowledge is power. Ignorance is damaging. People scam you because you are ignorant. People destroy your life because you are ignorant. The Bible says my people have been destroyed because of their ignorance. So we are here to fight ignorant or ignorance. In the same time, we try to make it as much we can, enjoyable. Is the word correct, enjoyable? I don't know. And excuse my English because I speak French, as you know. You know, let's say Lou is going to be French. So Lou Jouyable. So if you Lou enjoy what we do, please invite your friends and tell them to Lou join us and Lou come over here and Lou bring Muslims to Lou debate me. And then you will see Lou, how many Muslims will leave Islam like our sister today who is listening to my program for many years. I don't know how many years, but uh, what we do is very important. And what you do is more important now. I do my part. You better do your part. Teach your children, teach your family. Don't just come here to laugh and yeah, Muslims are funny, Islam is stupid. You need to share with your family, even the young ones, because they go to school, they meet with Muslim children, Muslims in your country. They are, you know, they 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 they, they, they are trained. They are trained to attack Christianity. They are trained to attack your belief. And your children, they have no idea. So don't leave your children to be victims. Here we are giving you the medicine to fight against the disease. And Islam is a disease. Don't let that disease enter your house. And do your best to save the Muslims from the disease of Islam. We don't hate the Muslims. And we will never hate them. We are here to save them. I'm not against the Muslims. My enemy is the devil. It's not a guy whose name is uh, Ali or Ahmad or... No. I'm here to save them. Same time, I'm here to help you so you can save more. And same time, so you can defend your family and your people and your town. And Muslims cannot fool your nation. So I want to say thank you all for being here. And I pray to the Lord that all of you will stay in good health and wealth. And I pray. You see, that you notice that the second we say we pray, etc., there is many people leaving. You know, those are the ones who they are coming here for fun. They are not coming here really to see at least two words about Jesus at the end. They don't want. They are just coming here for fun. They are not coming really to to hear anything. And you know, don't don't trust. No more fun. We are leaving. So those are the fake ones. But we are speaking to the real ones. The real ones of you is the one who have a passionate. He is a disciple or she is a disciple of Jesus, and they believe in their heart that they have a duty to bring mankind to the Savior. All what we do here is for Jesus, and not for Him to save Him to save us. What we do here for Jesus mean that we have a duty to bring people to Christ. And the more we know, especially about the language of the one who attacked Jesus, and when I say the language doesn't mean Arabic, the language, the logic, the questions, and how to answer, how to refute, and how to defeat. The more we know how to do it, the more we are occupied and arm ourselves with knowledge, the more we can conquer the devil kingdom, and we can demolish it. So one day will come and the Lord will ask you, my friend, and he will ask you, my sister, 
what you did, how many people you brought to me. If you say I am 60, 70, 80 years old, I never even won. That's not good news. The Bible speaks about the talent. Did you invest in your talent? Or you just hide your talent under the, under, under the tiles? So let us work together and let us save more people together and let us said, spread the truth and be brave. Don't be shy. Stand up for Christ. When somebody says something wrong, stand against the wrong. Don't fear. Your fear is your end. People die not when they die. People, they die when they have fear. A soldier, he will lose the war, not because the war was, the enemy was so strong. He will lose only when he have fear. A coward soldier, he cannot win a war. And our war with the devil need the brave men and women, warriors, who they believe, and their belief is their strength, is not their muscles, and for sure their knowledge. That's why the Bible says, read the book, search, find the truth, and the truth will set you free. And the truth is Jesus. So I say in the name of Jesus, may the Lord bless you for this coming weekend. Stay warm. Stay good. Be healthy. Remember the poor. Help the one. Help the needy. Help the old. Pray for them. And do help them when you can. And until we see you maybe tomorrow, if the Lord is willing, I will be happy to be here again. This is your brother Christian Prince was serving you humbly for today. And we see you again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. Thank you.